Really? <laughs> really, Squirtle? If you lose that fight, you don't have enough money to buy all the items you need in Pewter. The sneeze, you mean? No, I just happened to have a sneezing fit right before I had to had to start over. Imagine me having to sneeze right now and then waiting until the very end of the game to sneeze. Of course, I could easily sneeze at a point like right now. Like th this, I don't have to press any buttons for like 15 seconds. I don't know if I could button mash and sneeze at the same time. And you could sneeze here, too. I'm like, I'm thinking of, like, all the perfect times in the game where you could sneeze. Cycling Road is a really good time because you just bike down. Uh, when the SSAN is leaving is a good time because that takes 21 seconds. I timed it. My HP is one higher than last time. Glitchless, sneezeless, single segment speedrun. You're not allowed to use glitches, and you're not allowed to sneeze. I don't know. I don't know if any of the record holders actually sneezed during their runs. I'm not going to watch uh, two hours of a stream to see if they sneezed. I didn't see my stats. I think I saw 12 attack. Any platformers like that. Um, all the Metroid ones, uh, Mega Man speedruns are bad for that. I honestly don't think I could speedrun any game really besides like Pokemon. Last, last night, well, more like 3 in the morning, I watched uh, Worcester played Pokemon Stadium 2, uh, one of the, uh, just a random matchup in Stadium 2, blindfolded. So he didn't know what his Pokemon were, he didn't know what the opponent had, he didn't know what moves he had. It was pretty interesting. So basically he had to judge based on the cries of the Pokemon and what the announcer said to know what he had. He actually had a pretty good team too. I'd do something like that, but I just don't know enough about the game. Plus I don't have the game, so yeah. 
He literally hid under his blanket for an hour. I never had a Nintendo 64, so I don't know anything about Stadium. But it's always fun to watch. The battles are so slow, though, is the only thing. Like, it took it took him like 56 minutes to do eight battles, and he had to do two of them over. So basically, five to six minutes per battle. And it's three on three. And a lot of people use Stadium 2 to play uh, Game Boy games, like Red and Blue, because it has the transfer pack or whatever it's called. I'm playing this on my GameCube. Which is why you saw me accidentally press the Z button, because it's on my controller. Basically, there's an add-on called the Game Boy Player that attaches to the bottom of the GameCube, and it comes with a disc, and it lets you play any Game Boy or Game Boy Advance game on a GameCube on your TV. So you get to play uh, Pokemon Red on a 32-inch uh, TV. Well, Pokemon Blue. Instead of... What's the screen size on my Game Boy Pocket? It's tiny. Uh, another two encounter on this little bit. I think I had two encounters there last time and still made up time. Because I had a good Kakuna guy. Even though his Weedles are more threatening than the Kakuna. I still call him Weedle Guy. The best thing this guy can do is String Shot Fail, followed by Poison Sting, No Poison. Because with one speed drop, we have a chance of not outspeeding Kakuna. And with two speed drops, we won't outspeed Kakuna. Poison, right at the end. I'm going to red bar it. Wrong item. I want the antidote. I'll use a potion right before I kill him. Alright, good. A second crit would be really nice. We're already behind on this battle compared to last time, but last time we were way ahead, so... Watch me get a critical right here. 
Okay, I didn't. I would have been pissed. If I get poisoned, I'm just going to reset. Because... I'd rather not have to do that. And we're only 10 minutes in. Or just don't attack me. We are going to lose time on the first split of the game. Not a lot, it depends on encounters. But so far this is a very bad Viridian Forest. A Weedle in blue, nice. Ah, I forgot to switch moves. Please kill. If I get poisoned. Why'd I do that? Oh my god. <laughs> this is terrible. Alright, give me a metapod on the space right before him. Not quite. I may not level up from this. I haven't calculated my experience yet. Crit. That helps a little bit. Metapod. Metapod. Okay, nothing. Reset. Okay, good. We're going to lose about uh, 25 seconds. Twenty five point four. Eh, that's not bad. I don't mind being behind there. First split's just luck based anyway. We can make it up on the rival. My real goal is to just be ahead at Mew and be ahead at Surge. And then I will have, like, I'll be four minutes ahead if I don't make any big mess ups. Because after Surge, there's not a lot of luck involved in this run. Oh, I have good special. I have really good special, because that killed the Weedle, and this will kill the Caterpie. It, it doesn't kill Caterpie, but it killed the Weedle, and we're a level higher. Hmm. I should potion. I should have potioned. I'm not faster than this guy.
Ah, oh, two tail whips. Oh gosh. Ah, uh, crit. Okay, could have been worse. Alright, all of these should go down in one hit because my special is good. And the Metapod should go down in one hit too. This is what this is what uh, speedrun streams are. You see the beginning of the game so often and you rarely get to see the end of the game. And if you get to see the end of the game, it's world record pretty much. Unless they just have a run that's like three minutes behind and they don't reset any time. We'll hope Metapod goes down from one ember. Ah, okay. That's fine. Level 10. Paris. Only a level 8, but it's good enough. Only takes one turn to kill. Level 7. Might go down in one hit. Might. Well, chat seems to be working again for you. Like it finally typed, uh, Twitch has a lot of bugs with chat. Come on.
I've killed four things now. <laughs> Come on. Dude, Zubat, go away. I think I need to kill one more thing. Unless I find a Paris, I will just wait. I don't know why I went down. Level 10 Zubats are not nice. Paris, okay, that's good. That will level me up. This Mount Moon is even slower than last time. And this is exactly why. Okay, only one attack and no tail whips. Now we need no supersonic. I'm gonna risk it. There we go. I needed some time back. Welcome back, Oscar. If you came back, I'm not sure if you were here the whole time or not. <laughs> Come on! I don't need any more encounters, I'm already a Trimelian. Dude! This is the this is like the exact same Mount Moon I had on cartridge, except I didn't fight these guys. I just ran into so many. Even if we have a perfect rival fight, we're gonna be like really on the verge of being behind still. He uses Screech first turn. He doesn't do that very often. Usually he'll tackle first. So now we have a minus four defense, and we have to take uh, at least one hit from coughing. This is why it's easier with a Charmeleon, because we have more defense. Charmander would have taken about 20 from that. I was at the rival fight at 23 on my fast run before. Okay, out of Mount Moon at 24. <laughs> this is so slow. And we still have to heal up. Mm, we'll be close if we can have a good rival fight. 
We'll be close, but um, we'll still probably be like a minute behind. Assuming we don't lose. I don't expect to lose that rival fight anymore. We'll have about two and a half minutes on the rival fight. It normally takes about three, even with a good run. Okay, here we go. The next uh, 20 minutes of this game will decide the fate of the run. I thought my special was better than this. Okay, burn. Now that I've started getting Magikarp, I haven't needed him. Which is just how luck works. I heal on Abra before I attack because a scratch critical might kill, as you can see. Radito will always go down in two. Hyper Fang is about the worst thing it can do. Hyper Fang and then Quick Attack is bad. Because that's a lot of damage. Um, I'll heal to be safe, because a water gun crit might kill. Yes, a water gun crit would have killed. Tackle miss is nice. Not risking a water gun crit. Okay, two turns and we win. I'll get ready to split. Okay, we're going to make up good time there. Made up 55 seconds. I still don't know how I managed to make up that much time, because I had a really good rival last time. So we'll just have to see how this part goes. I just want to be ahead or even at Surge. Because from Surge to Kaga, I'm not going to make up very much time. I don't know if I can make up any time between Surge and Koga. Because I had... I did that part of the game almost perfect. It's going to be just luck if I make up any. Crit on the Pidgey. Avoid Sand Attack. Uh, will this kill? Yes. Yes. 
Good. No quick attack. Alright, I don't bother healing here just because I'm planning on dying anyway. Second turn of Rap is always a good time to heal because Rap will always last at least two turns and there's nothing you can do that turn anyway. And another crit on Zubat. I'd like to die on Mankey. Maybe I can red bar at the end of this fight. Because Maggie's easy to die on, too. Okay, red bar. Even though it's technically blue health, you're always in blue health on this game. Okay, perfect. And now I let Mankey kill me. Good. Stop using Leer. Well, that'll kill me. There we go. On an earlier run, on my really good start run, we were about... 3130 after the final nugget bridge trainer that gives the nugget. So that'll basically show me how much time we can potentially make up on this run with a good start. Yeah, that's the second time we've had that happen. Because he doesn't die from the burn. So we'll be about two minutes behind that run, but we'll still be ahead. Oh, I'm getting hungry. How long have I been streaming? Like two hours, two and a half already, and I haven't got a run? I should just go say this will be my last one of the day, but I, I don't want to say that until after I get Mew. Crit Zubat. Okay, we are like two minutes behind our best run of the day. Alright, Abra. Abra called it. <laughs> Dang it, that's the second time that's happened. We needed that to make up time. Abra first ball, first encounter. I had that same thing happen on our last run, too, and it took, like, two minutes to find another one. Actually, is that the one we ran out of Pokeballs? It might have been.
Okay, at least we're finding Abra. It's pretty good. Just can't ever have good luck on Abra, can we? I like to have Abra by 36 or 37. If we get Mew to 100, I will finish this run regardless. But we have to find an Abra. We found three, and we're 0 for 3. Abra by 37 minutes, eh, it's not bad. It would be nice to catch Mew quickly, though. Because that's probably the only way we're going to make up time on this split. As if we catch Mew within a minute. And I get a low enough level encounter that I don't have to switch twice. Can I three hit the horsey? Yes, I can. Okay. I forgot I still have to growl this guy. That burn doesn't help unless we crit. Mm.
Hey, welcome back, Niv. Uh, we're about to get Mew. Well, hopefully get Mew. We are not, uh... It took about four minutes to get Abra, so... We, we have to get Mew pretty fast if we want to make up any time on this split. Or at least stay ahead. So we just need a fast Mew capture. I'm finishing this run regardless, though. As long as we get Mew and get it to 100, I'm finishing the run because I haven't done a run complete yet today. Okay. I'll take it. I do have a lot of patience, but I'm going for a record, so patience is a virtue. Okay, I will not screw this up this time. I need something that's not an Abra and preferably Caterpie. Nice. Okay. That's perfect. We're going to make up time. Okay, the run is about to begin. The run is officially underway, guys. <laughs> Jagger, are you still here? Or did you fall asleep? Because it's like 2 in the morning over there. Alright, the next about uh, 10 minutes of the game is just button mashing for the most part, so... Yeah, I'm excited too. We actually get to have a run. If we can stay ahead at Surge, we have potential to get about a minute, an hour 48 on this run. Which, my goal is an hour 48, which would probably mean about uh, an hour 40 sits of game time. Okay, the reason Mew doesn't learn any moves is because it grows straight to level 100. It, it doesn't hit the other levels, and in this game... If it misses a level, it doesn't learn the moves it would have learned. Hmm. The same uh, glitch, it's called Experience Underflow, where they can level straight from 1 to 100. It exists in the Generation 2 games as well, Gold and Silver and Crystal. And they'll actually learn all their moves in that game. Because they'll, they'll grow all the way up. They'll grow from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 5, and so on. No, actually, they just grow to 100, and then they learn all their moves. I'm thinking of something else that involves, like, save corruption. Okay, um, the Pokemon that you can do it with, any three-stage evolutionary line including the starters, not including uh, Caterpie, Weedle, and Dragonite. And it also includes Mew. That is the experience group that allows you to level up straight to 100. And I'm sorry, but I am voiding my run. I have to sneeze, I think. I don't know. I could, I could hold this in. I don't have to sneeze. Well... <coughs> 
<coughs> Sorry, sneezeless speedrun is over. <laughs> Thank you. For some reason, I think there's an ether here. Okay. I read there was an ether there. That will help me out later on. Why do it with Mew? Because... Um... Oh, crap. Oh, if you say no, he still uh, says it. You can cap. You can get uh, other Pokemon at this point that are in that area. You can get Venusaur. Well, actually, Ivysaur, but you can evolve it. You can get Nidoking, Nidoqueen, and Gengar as well. But they all have one thing in common that makes it so you can't use them, and that is because they're all poison type. And later on I get Mew poisoned, so I wouldn't be able to poison them. And plus Mew's stats are just really good. Like you can use different trainers and get different Pokemon. Just on that route alone above me you can get Nidoqueen and Gengar. Yep, pretty complicated. You can actually manipulate what you get without using trainers. Well, you have to fight a trainer, but... You can use uh, wild Pokemon to get stuff to appear. You can use your own Pokemon if you find a Ditto and get it to transform into your Pokemon. And it's based on stats. Namely, the special stat. So, the Swimmer with the Shelter... His shelter has a special stat of 21, which corresponds to Mew. Don't ask why, it's just the way the Pokemon are organized in memory. <laughs> yeah, but for example, if you use 131 as a special stat, which of course... Nothing you'll find this early on as 131, you'll be able to get Mewtwo. 153 gets Bulbasaur. That's just some random ones I know. Uh, no, it's not intentional. <laughs> There's just so many glitches in this. You can walk on water and surf in, on land in this gym, actually. Alright, what do I do next? It's been a while since I've been to this point. <laughs> yeah, Mew is only supposed to be given out at Nintendo events. In the Japanese version, you get him when you complete your Pokédex besides Mew, but that's not in this game. Only, Jap only the Japanese versions. The surfing on land involves surfing onto the water and getting on land and surfing onto a swimmer and you'll actually it's complicated oh by the way we beat misty and i don't have a split for misty because literally there's nothing in between getting you and misty that you can do to save time besides there's really nothing, because it's all button mashing. Because between Surge and Erica, I don't fight any gyms, but basically I just remove the Snorlaxes. And, well, there's a lot involved in removing them, so I just gave them their own split. I do those splits when I go over where the Snorlax was.
Um, I think there's a Matt's Revive and maybe some of the stat boosters, but nothing we really need. And I don't know where they are anyway. No, I don't want to talk to you. I'd rather just get by you without battling you. But I couldn't quite come up with a way to do that. Because you'll have to go back through this route anyway another time. So it's not worth it. There's one more heavily luck based part of this run and it's coming up in about five minutes. Get out of the way. After this part, the only luck-based parts afterwards are finding a Venonat and hoping not to get like 1 in 30 hacks. The last two times I've had a full run, I've got trolled by Venonat. It doing something that should only happen about 1 in 30 times. I'll, I'll explain that when we get there. Oh, we're fighting the rival again, and he's like two levels higher. He's literally, I think his whole team is one level higher. Except Squirtle to War Turtle is like two. Okay, his Kadabra is three higher. His Kadabra and War Turtle are three levels higher, and his others are one level higher. <laughs> yeah, I'm 99 higher. I didn't have, I didn't have Mew last time though. Okay, now we get cut. I kind of want to take a bathroom break while I'm getting off the SSN, but I don't think I have enough time. <laughs> 21 seconds, I don't think I can go that fast. So I'll hold it in another hour. I might go turn the light on though, I'm not sure. We'll see. This part takes 21 seconds before you regain control. 21 seconds. This is stupid. <laughs> we still don't have control. Still don't. Still don't. Now we do. That takes forever. Yes, I came to visit to hear about your rapid ash. I'll get the bike uh, shortly. 
I'm gonna fight Surge first. Charmander turns into my HM slave. Only getting cut, really. Okay, here we go. Cross your fingers, guys. Yes! First try. All I know is that the first switch is in a random place, and the second switch is in one of the adjacent squares. However, I have had the second one be in the same spot as the first one. I don't know why. And I actually misclicked on the same one, and I got it. Talk about amazing luck. <laughs> okay, so we have potential to make up about five minutes on this run. Because from here on out, it's pretty straightforward. Well, a lot of glitches, but it's straightforward, not a lot of luck parts. Okay, we I had good trash cans last time too. So we made up uh nine point nine seconds. Now barring any major mistakes, we should be good and keep that time for a while. Okay, now we're teleporting to Cerulean to get the bike. I did not heal in Vermilion at all, so we can do this and then bike back. Yeah, I did a lot of this optimization myself. Um, I don't need potions anymore. At least I hope I don't. That was bad. I keep forgetting that that closes your menu when you use it. I used to heal in a uh, Vermilion, but then I'd have to walk up because I have to heal in Vermilion later. But it was just, it just took too long to walk all the way back up. Okay, we're about to do our next major glitch. As you can see, the next split is Snorlax 1, and we're not far away time-wise. I can't believe I'm ahead of yesterday. Precautionary save upcoming. <laughs> okay, healing there lets us teleport back to Vermilion from this guy. It's trying to fly again. Now, Trainer Fly has an interesting side effect that we didn't see last time, but it lets us escape from a trainer battle, and it also has the side effect of making things disappear. And you'll see the disappearing part if we can get by this. Our sprite apparently turned into either A, B, C, D, or E, F, G, H. I don't know why that happens. Come on! <laughs> okay, we're going to lose time on this split just because encounters. Ha! <laughs> 
<laughs> Dude. Sand Shrew, go away. I love Sand Shrew, but you're not here at a good time. Hey, there's another guy on this same route who's never won before, and he's the same age. He's probably only battled like twice in his career, which is why he's never lost. His first loss, okay. And now we are going to visit Snorlats. Okay, hi Snorlats. Okay. The last place we're on that has a sprite that can disappear is Route 11, the Snorlax. So, for some reason, when you do train or fly, it makes a, a sprite disappear, and this is a Mr. Mime. That gambler happens to give Mr. Mime as his Pokemon. Okay, trainer fly... It's a glitch. Whoa, no, 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 no. It lets you escape from a trainer battle. As long as the trainer is what's called a long-range trainer that sees you on the first step that they come on screen. So you can fly, or in my case, teleport away. Nah, not Pokedex. And Snorlax is gone as a side effect of that glitch. I'll explain more on that when I do the second one. Yeah, it's how I got Mew. It, it makes the game think you're in a trainer battle at the time. And basically, when you come back to the route where you had the trainer battle, it will still think you're in that battle, but it won't have the data because you fought something else afterwards. So it'll just try to give you a battle with a random Pokemon, which that last time happened to be Mr. Mime. I don't know why it makes stuff disappear, but it just does. And that glitch is very important for this run. Okay, this guy you can't skip. There aren't many trainers left we have to fight besides gym leaders, so... Okay, we're now in Lavender Town, and I'm stopping by the Pokemart because it's close by. And we're buying one soup, One <laughs> Super Repel. We're going to lose time just because of that. I'm not worried. We were ahead at Surge, that's all I wanted. Just being ahead at Surge is good enough for me. I was thinking Jigglypuff, Clefairy's not very round. Voltorb Fluffy? <laughs> Maybe if it was like a plush Voltorb. Oops. I still don't trust myself there to go at full speed. Okay, we're going to Celadon. Just taking care of business normally for now. And it's thundering outside now.
Okay, TM-18 is counter, not like the one he's leaning on. <laughs> That's like the stupidest line in the whole game. Counter is useful in about 10 minutes. Or less. Oh, we'll get to see him later on, too, because I actually have to fight that trainer in the gym. Okay, we're now going into Saffron. I actually saw a speedrun where this guard giving him the drink warped him to the Hall of Fame. Oops. <laughs> exactly. All those glitch speedruns, that was tool assisted, but you can do it normally. Okay, now we are going to Lavender. Well, not Lavender, but we're going this way. Saving again, just a precaution. Even though I'm getting a lot better at Trainer Fly, I'm still prone to screw it up. <laughs> okay, we also don't have a start menu after we do Trainer Fly until we fight another trainer. So I can't use my bike, and I also can't talk to people. Like if I were to press A on this rocket, it would literally, he would turn and face me, but there would be no test. So I have to fight a trainer to get rid of trainer, to get rid of uh, that side effect. And the fastest trainer to fight is this guy. He's the closest trainer that has one Pokemon. And just the fact that he only has one Pokemon saves a lot of time in the long run. The only trivia I know is all this useless stuff. <laughs> I, I would win, as long as it's game trivia, not like anime and trading card trivia. Because I, I never did anything with the trading card game, and I haven't watched much of the anime past the first, well, the original. And now we are visiting Snorlax and picking up Fly. Okay, I've not tested this yet. I was thinking about uh, flying to Lavender instead of teleporting to Celadon. I have not figured out if that will mess up the glitch, teleporting to Lavender. Once again, we're making Snorlax disappear, so the last place with the disappearable trainer has to be the Route 16. So we can't go through Saffron, because in Saffron, every single rocket disappears. And now I'm going to teach TMs. I'll teach Psychic later on, I don't need it right now. Oh, and now we get a battle in a building. 
and it's an Electabuzz. It's because I won't have... I'll beat the Elite Four in this run, so I'll need TMs eventually, but I need all three of these next moves later on. Yes, I'll be using all four of these moves within the next ten minutes, probably. And I teach them there because the start menu pops up anyway. I could teach them anytime, but I just like doing it there. Okay, made up five seconds on that. And now Cycling Road. Do not have, you don't have to press anything here and you don't have to fight any trainers. So amazing. Alright, I'm trying to remember exactly what I do next. Cycling Road is so fun. Because now I start multitasking. I do a lot of multitasking from here on out. I have to pee, but I'm done with this run in less than 40 minutes, so I can hold it. <laughs> okay, now we need to find Venonat. Bellsprout and Weeping Bell work, but Venonat is much more reliable. Alright, first try, got it. Okay. So we have to get poison from Venonat, and the only, we have to get a move that won't kill it, which is counter. Counter will never do anything to this, except do, like, two damage recoil. We just have to get poisoned. Come on, poison powder. Poison powder. <laughs> Poison powder. <laughs> Poison powder. <laughs> Poison, thank you. <laughs> this is still good because it usually takes a long time to find a Venonat. They're 20%. And now I'm lowering my health. It's faster to lower my health by doing nothing in this battle than it is to bike around while poisoned. We just gotta hope we have enough PP because he did so much tackling. And... I'll just run. I don't want to get too low on health. I'd rather bike around than be too low on health and have to heal. This next segment is where I messed up last time. Not uh, the Erica segment, well not the Erica split, but this whole segment of being poisoned is where I screwed it up. How much health do we have? 150. Okay, now we're going into the Safari Zone. And it is pouring down rain. Can you guys hear that? It's pretty far away from the mic, so I don't know if you can. Okay, now we're leaving the Safari Zone, except we're not. And this is the reason why this can't be a... Why it has to be timed in real time, because we do saving and resetting a couple times in this run. Okay, so this is the start of the walk through walls glitch. 
Now we can leave the safari zone and he'll ask if we want to go back in. This is how you escape the safari zone. Now we're on our step counter right now. Now we're going to Celadon and we're going to take on Erica pretty soon. I think I did around 60 health last time. I don't actually have to count steps. You can count the poison ticks at, or just keep an eye on your health. Because 500 steps and you take poison damage every four, which means after uh, you lose 124 health is when you jump off the ledge. But it's slightly different with this. 94. Okay, we are going to make up good time on Erica because I found that Venonat so quickly. Okay, now this is an interesting feature. When you're in red health, you can hear the beeping in the background, and it also makes battles go faster because Pokemon's cries don't last as long, and you actually regain control to select moves faster and stuff. It saves just between Erica and Koga. I saved about 35 seconds just by doing the red bar health. And literally between Erica and Koga, all I do is, tell, is fly to Fuchsia and fight Koga. And this certain level of health keeps me in a red bar for this fight, puts me in a red bar of health for Koga, and gives me enough steps to get out of Koga's gym and jump off the ledge. So yeah, it took some planning to get the right amount of health. We made up 54 seconds on Erica because of Venonat. That is very good. Now we get out of the gym. And now to Fuchsia. After we fight Koga is where it gets really interesting because I royally screwed this up last time. We will gain so much time on Sabrina that it won't even be funny. My first, my last good run before I changed my route, it took four minutes between Koga and Sabrina. This time it took over 11 because I screwed up and did something differently. Two crits that I didn't need, okay. Also, Kadabra has the cry of ghastly when I'm on red health. Being on red health makes the game really act up because it has to do the beeping as well. And this is the drop my balls juggler, by the way. Mew sounds like Starmie when he's on low health as well. Either Star you or Starmie. Oops, dropped my balls.
<laughs> we won't really gain any time on this split. It's like impossible to gain more than a few seconds. We'll probably lose time just because those two criticals. <laughs> it's funny because he wasn't even juggling vault orbs. He was juggling drowsy and hypno. Like, why would you juggle drowsy and hypno? Also, Voltorb and Electrode are very heavy. I don't know why anyone w would want to juggle them. At the end of the run, I will look up their Pokedex to see how heavy Voltorb and Electrode are. We made up 7.4 seconds. This net split will be amazing. Okay, now because we have to get Mew killed, we have to deposit all of our other Pokemon. Because obviously they're not poisoned. So we don't need Cut anymore in this game. We don't need Teleport because we have Fly and we never needed Magikarp in the first place. Definitely saving, because this is what screwed up the whole run last time. Okay. So I go back and forth twice and then jump, I believe. Back and forth twice, one over and then jump, maybe? I didn't save last time, which is what screwed up everything. Oh my fucking god, this is not going to work. This, no, this glitch happens sometimes. And it makes your 500 steps stupid. And it makes it so when you jump off a ledge, you don't get that. It calls you back late. What did I do? Okay, got it. <laughs> Jumping off ledges does that. Okay, we can walk through stuff. Saved it. Took a little longer. This is why I got Mew so low on health before I started this glitch. So he would die faster in here. And now it gets interesting. You notice Sabrina's next on the split, but we're uh, going to Cinnabar instead. Yes, biking on the rocks. I got lucky saving that. <laughs> that was a creative save that's going to save this run. Now we're in Cinnabar, and now we can fly to Cinnabar later on. Which is the whole point of doing that, is now we can fly to Cinnabar. So we don't have to use walk through walls again to get to Cinnabar. And that, that girl is a bird for some reason. The sprites get wacky when you don't go through the loading areas correctly. Now we need another Venonat. No, some guys are actually bikers, but they turn into hikers instead. 
Maybe bird keepers turn into birds. Ditto. You could possibly uh, get toxic from you and use a ditto to get poisoned. <laughs> but it's not worth it. Because Venonat's more common than ditto anyway. Weeping Bell. Okay, Bell Sprout and Weeping Bell can poison, but they can also put you to sleep and paralyze you. So it's not worth trying. Ditto. I found the first Venonat quickly, so the second Venonat's going to troll me. Pidgeotto. We have found everything that can appear on this route at Set Venonat. It's more common than Abra, if that means anything. But not by much. Okay, got it. Now, we just have to hope that it does not use Disable First Turn and Disable Counter. That's happened to me twice. <laughs> The odds of it disabling counter are about 1 in 30. Because first it has to use disable. It has four moves that uses them randomly. That's 1 in 4. The odds of disable hitting are 55%. And then the odds of disable disabling counter is 1 in 4 because it picks a random one of your moves. Alright, poisoned. Nice. Nice. Um, I'm going to play it safe and do that. I think I can do one more counter, but I'm not for sure. The poison is we're going to kill Mew again one more time in the uh, kind of distant future, but I'm getting him poisoned now. We can still walk through stuff, by the way. Getting into wild battles does not get rid of your walk through walls, and now we can go visit Sabrina. Going in a door resets it. It's faster to get poison now than to do it later. And now for this amazing Sabrina split. We, we lost about a minute because I struggled with the jumping. And I think we had about the same luck with Venonat as the other day. Basically, I want to have my health be close to 130 by the time I get to the Safari Zone to walk through walls again. Which is why I get to a certain level of health. I think I have to go uh, one more counter, but I don't want to be too low, because then I'll have to waste time using a potion. Are you ready for this split? <laughs> Save three minutes on the terrible one yesterday. Apparently you can use an escape rope out of here, but I never really figured it out. You can't use an escape rope out of here normally. It has to do with the teleporters. And now we're stuck in the door. Okay, super repel. We have to do the whole thing again, the secret key. The only thing that happens if you do another walk through walls to get to Cinnabar, you can go into the gym without the key. But it's faster to go through this than to do the whole thing with getting poisoned and running out 500 steps again. And 
also there is an item in here that's really helpful. Blizzard. And you can't bike in here. Sucks. This part is really just, can you do it without making any missteps? Because Blaine is button mashing too. Escape rope out of here. And we have to go back to uh, Fuchsia instead of Cinnabar because it teleports you to the last Pokemon Center you used instead of the entrance to the area. And we can't heal in Cinnabar because we're poisoned. This part just takes an unnecessarily long time. Pokemon Trivia! How many gym badges are there? I think there are only six, actually. There definitely aren't nine. I don't know where the ninth one would be. This question is misleading. Poliwag evolves three times, starting with uh, the game after this. <laughs> it will evolve into Politoed. This Pokemon trivia isn't even hard, though. It's not actually 1 in 30, it's approximately 1 in 30. And this is the best question of them all. TM28 contains Tombstoner. I just aced the Pokemon trivia. It's actually Dig, of course. <laughs> But at least they pick a TM that you're required to get. Like, you have to get Dig. There's no way to avoid getting Dig. Come on! <laughs> the rain is coming down so hard right now. And I just saw lightning. Fantastic. And thunder. And somebody closing a door really loud in the hallway. And you probably notice you don't take poison damage if you kill the opponent in this game. Which is the only reason that I can get poisoned before. We saved 0.8 seconds! There is, like, one more thing I can screw up in this. And I'm going to pray that I don't. It's something I'd be careful on. One thirty two, not bad. Well, one thirty one now. Okay, I'm glad I did not let it attack me one more turn.
Now we're already poisoned, so we don't have to deal with Venonat. And now I'm teaching TMs. One thirty two of game time at this point. Oh, my, this could be really good. This could be better than I imagine it to be. One thirty one. So I need to get to seven and then jump. I'll save before just in case I mess it up. Now I could not figure out anything to multitask during this part so unfortunately I just have to bike around and use up my steps. I'm kind of counting, but kind of not. I'm just going to look at my health. I should be at 13. So six. Okay. All right. Now we're going to the Pokemon League. Once again, I have to fly to Viridian because we could not have healed there. I also already taught my TMs, so that'll save a little bit of time. I don't even worry about bad steps here because I'd rather not mess up. Okay, now we got the same uh, glitchy route because it didn't load all the stuff. <laughs> this is the coolest part of the run. Like, assuming I don't screw up and I get a really good time and I upload this to YouTube, this is going to be the thumbnail. And by the way, if you go to one of these badge check gates without the badge, you lose your walkthrough walls. Now, what badge do we not have? We don't have the Earth badge. Who is, uh, who are you, Narlash? Okay, we just got by the Earth Badge check. We got by Victory Road. And, well, howdy, new, new, uh, viewer or whatever. Now we're going to fight the Elite Four. And there is absolutely nothing that can happen from now on that can uh, keep me from getting a personal best. So 
Let's try. I'm trying for 148. <laughs> like I seriously can't die, and I have an ether now that I picked up way, way back. I still need to do more damage calculations on the Elite Four because I'm still thunderbolting stuff when I could probably psychic it. I know uh, Dugong has a lot of special defense, so it might be able to tank a psychic. I'd rather get the guaranteed kill than risk it to do testing. I think uh, Jinx isn't a guaranteed kill if my special's bad enough, but I've killed it every time, so... There's really only two bad things that can happen in the whole Elite Four, and those don't come up until Lance. Uh, hint, they're both spelled the opposite way of their actual word counterparts. Like Onyx, the gemstone, is spelled with a Y, and Jinx, as in, yeah. You can go sleep in ten minutes, come on. <laughs> Speaking of Onyx... Wow, it's almost 3 a.m. there, isn't it? And you said you didn't sleep last night? I guess watching a good uh, speedrun stream keeps you awake, because, I mean, I I was watching Worcester yesterday until, like, 3 a.m. to stay up. Okay, um, I'm planning my ether, if I even need it, because Agatha's dead. Agatha is the poison type elite four member because there are only because there's only one ghost evolutionary line, she uses all poison types. She uses two Gengars and a Haunter, but she also uses Golbat and Arbok. I don't know, maybe it's like a second Pokemon Tower. There there really is a lot of atmosphere in these games though, because like Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, for example, it's just a colored room. Like, it has pinkish pillars for the ghost types or psychic types. It has icy pillars for the ice types, and that's literally the only decoration. Alright, I should be in good shape to get 148. I, I count 148.59 as a 58, I mean as a 48, so. But these last two fights have really long intros and outros. Also, I haven't figured out when the best time to stop the timer is, but I always go with after the final battle. Although now that I think about it, it's a real time run, so maybe it should stop at the Hall of Fame. Okay, cross your fingers for Blizzard hitting all three times. How many fingers do you have crossed right now is the question. Let's 
Psychic will probably kill Aerodactyl, but I don't have enough Psychics left. I do have that Aether, though, so... But I don't have to use the Aether unless I get a miss with Blizzard. And I need to use a Psychic for something else. Any chance at 147 after the champion battle? <laughs> that would... 147.56 would mean we make up about 12 seconds on the Pokemon League. Okay, this fight is longer because he has six Pokemon and battle animations are on by default. There's only one Pokemon that can absolutely screw you over, and that is Alakazam. Even with the level 100 Mew, Alakazam can really mess you up. Okay, the best bet with Alakazam, I like to use Fly and hope it doesn't use Reflect. Okay, now we gotta get a crit. Okay, Psychic is fine as long as it doesn't lower our special. If it lowers our special, we're in trouble. Okay, good. Um, uh, Thunderbolt should kill. If it lowers our special, we'll miss out on two important kills on the rest of his Pokemon. Rhydon will get killed by anything. But his Arcanine will not go down in one hit with anything. If you have a special drop. And his Executor is just mean. Will I get out of this battle at 147 is the question. It depends on its Zegator. If Blizzard hits, we're good. Blizzard's a guaranteed kill. Fly is not a guaranteed kill. And Blastoise goes down with Thunderbolt. I, I'm just going to keep stopping the timer when we get out of the battle. Even though I should probably keep it to the Hall of Fame because it is a real time. That was good. I want to see a 146 at the end, but because we're five minutes up, it could be a 145. But it's probably going to be... Well, it could be 145, because we had those resets on uh, the Sabrina split. Thank you. Thank you for the congrats. I'll wait until I see the time at the end, though. 145 would be really nice. My goal was 146. My first run of this ever was 208. So we've definitely improved on that. What do we got? 145. <laughs> 145. That is <laughs> I can improve that, but it would take doing so well in the beginning of the game. Because like I said, I was two minutes ahead of my current time on the rival. And I found Abra first ball, but it didn't catch. And this was after a kind of slow start and not so great Mount Moon either. So I got 145. I'm uh, celebrating. Ha! See ya! Ha! 
now I get to watch the credits after this. Um, 145 is going to be really hard for me to improve on because my route... I, I can't do any improving with the route except just getting lucky. So, I don't know. Maybe I should just leave this for now. I might do like a few more days of runs and just maybe try to get uh, uh, a two minute faster start. But 145 game time is pretty intense. Um, I believe the segmented record with no corruption is an hour 32. Of course, segmented runs are completely different because if something doesn't work out, you can reset. You can reset until you get Mount Moon with no encounters, and it's still technically a run. And they usually take like 50,000 times re-recording different parts of it. So, as far as I know, this is the record for single segment. But then again, I don't know the category, if there even is one. 147 game time going back here, and we can... Well, I don't know. What was I going to show? Oh, yeah. I was going to show Voltorb and Electrode their weight. Okay, according to Bulbapedia, Voltorb weighs 22.9 pounds. And Electrode weighs 146.8 pounds. So if you were planning on juggling Voltorbs or Electrodes, you're going to have a bad time. Speaking of bad time, we it took us a lot of tries to get this run going, but... That was about as good as I could possibly imagine it. I can definitely improve, but I don't know if I want to right now. So that's going to be it for the stream. I had a lot of fun getting this time down so far. So thanks for coming, the few people that have left, and I am done.